Shavua Tov, uh, a good week, uh, already in progress, uh, but welcome to the second week of Elul Boot Camp. Uh, the subject for this week is relationship with the world. Last week we talked about relationship with others, specific relationships with people who are part of our life. This week we're talking about a larger uh, experience of relationship, uh, in some ways an intimidating one, with the world itself. To a certain extent, that's a relationship with the earth and uh, environmental consciousness. And for some, that will play a, a bigger role than others in terms of their thinking about what it means to have a relationship with the world. Um, the exercise that we're going to do, I'll explain in just a moment. But um, I want to also address the, the bigger picture of why relationship with the world and why are we talking about it uh, in the context of Teshuvah of returning to what we have said before as our best self, which has uh, to do with our mindfulness and reflection on what we've done and who we are and, um, and what it means for us to be uh, responsible. So this responsibility to the world, um, it actually involves a kind of paradox. The paradox is that while we might think that the most important thing we can do is to find ourselves not the center of the universe, right? Especially our religious instinct is to say, okay, you know, we think of ourselves all the time, uh, but now we have to think of others or think of God or think of ways in which, you know, it's not all about us. But in order to do Teshuvah, in order to recognize our responsibility to do this work of reflection and mindfulness, we actually have to, in some ways, put ourselves at the center of the universe. And that's the paradox, right? We have to see ourselves as responsible in a way that seems quite audacious, since the world is bigger than us by an order of magnitude that we can't even imagine. Not just the Earth, but the universe. And not just the universe of the physical world, which is already quite beyond us, but um, even beyond the physical um, to things that we have no understanding of. So how do we find ourselves in the center of that universe? There's actually a statement that comes from the Kotzk Rebbe, Menachem Mendel of, uh, of Kotzk, a uh, Hasidic rabbi, who said that every person should have in their pocket two different uh, crumpled up pieces of paper. One that says, I am dust and ashes. Uh, certainly this uh, way of being humble, that's part of our religious tradition. And the other is, the universe was created for me. And uh, this statement is uh, itself an encapsulation of that paradox. And we're going to come back to it also next week when we talk about relationship with ourself. But for the purposes of this conversation, we're going to focus on the part that may seem even more audacious, right? Dust and ashes, I don't know exactly what it means to walk around feeling like I'm as low as dust and ashes. That seems like a kind of thing a pious person would try to do. But the universe was created for me. That's something even more surprising. So what are we going to do with, uh, with this kind of jarring thought um, that there is no one else who can approach the world with the responsibility that that we can experience when we experience the world, always in our own lens, always through our own uh, experience. The first thing we're going to do is put a blank, fill in this blank. It's kind of like um, God lips, you know, mad lips for religious purpose. We are going to fill in the blank here uh, of the sentence. My responsibility is to blank the world, right? It, 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 I can't help it. It feels like the match game. But this is what we're going to do. My responsibility is to blank the world. And uh, perhaps some inappropriate thoughts uh, come to mind. That's okay, too. Um, this is sort of the way our mind works. The 
think about it. Our responsibility is to blank the world. Um, the second part has to do with a uh, Hebrew teaching, a uh, teaching from Pirkei Avot, the um, ethics of the ancestors, which is Lo alecha ham lecha ligmor, lo ata ben chorin li batel mimenu, which means it is not on you to finish the work, but neither are you exempt from engaging and trying to complete it. What is the work? That's the question. Hamalach, the malacha, the the task. What is that task? If you were to think about what this phrase is referring to, it is not on you to complete this task, the work, but you are not free, you are not exempt from trying. And the last part is actually um, where I want uh, to go a little bit more free form. Where did we learn that that is our particular responsibility or particular task? If you have some idea in mind of what you think your job is in the world, where did you learn? So that's the, uh, that's the assignment and that's the background. This may seem, as I said, a little more abstract than last week, um, but uh, we're going to begin with this approach uh, to the question, relationship with the world, and um, please send me, you don't again, like last time, have to send me everything, uh, but please send me the word from the blank and the name of the task, um, just a reflection on, on where that comes. From. I think that would be helpful, and uh, I look forward to continuing during the week. Um, you can always give me feedback directly. Just um, you don't have to hit the send all to, to the entire participant group. You can always send stuff to me directly, and you can feel free to, to share with the group as well. Looking forward to uh, continuing to, to explore these ideas with you.